Today, we are talking to Costa, founder, CEO, and chief troublemaker at NetData. Costa, why did the world need a new infrastructure monitoring tool? Uh, NetData was born out of frustration. I never, I never uh, meant to build a monitoring solution. Um, back in 2014, it was a hard time for me. I was responsible for a large fintech infrastructure, probably the biggest one in the Balkan area in Europe. Uh, and we, were ha we had a lot of issues. So we were moving this infrastructure from on-prem to the cloud. But randomly, this infrastructure had severe degradation in performance. So although it was working and we didn't have exceptions and then nothing else, very few queries, very few transactions managed to be executed. The stress and the pressure was tremendous. Uh, I was being uh, called by, uh, you know, CTOs or big, big uh, uh, consumer chains here in Athens, telling me, hey, Costa, you know, the, the, the queue of people is around the block now. <laughs> Are we going to sell something today? So during that time, I installed every monitoring solution that existed. I, I built a team of about 16 engineers. Uh, we had a lot of great help, actually, from the hosting provider, the cloud provider. But still, after several months, after a million euros spent, after a lot of, uh, a lot of frustration, no solution. No tool was able to detect what was wrong. So they, was, they were able to, to say that, OK, something is wrong here. You have a degraded performance. But other than that, nothing. So my engineers ended up using the consoles, the consoles of every tool, every database, every web server, every Linux system, every component that existed in the, in the infrastructure to figure out what is wrong, what has happened, why this is happening. So, when I realized that, my first intention was not to build another monitoring solution. It was to make their lives easier. So I said, OK, since they need the console, why, what can we do to eliminate the console? So I started experimenting with a tool. You know, the first question is, is it possible? Why people have not done it before? Huh? What, what's wrong with this approach? Um, and then I realized that they have a scalability problem, so they can't do it because they are centralizing all the metrics. So after a while, when you scale enough, having all the information and all the metrics and the, in full resolution becomes mission impossible. It's too expensive to run it. So I started building the data in, with this in mind. This was the main problem that I wanted to solve, how to have high fidelity monitoring, all the information, and scale to infinity. In those early days, was there a struggle to get net data noticed? I, I spent a couple of years building the data, you know, as a side project. Uh, I used it to solve the problems of the, of the company I was working for, and also I found several bugs at the hosting provider with net data. Um, mm -hmm. So after, the, after a couple of years, I said, okay, well, probably it's good to release it to the public. Let's see what people think about it. It was open source from the first day. Uh, but I said, let's, let's see what happens now. Uh, so I pressed that button on GitHub and guess what? Nothing happened. So one day, uh, while I was drinking coffee to go to my office, I, wrote, I read an article saying that if you want, if you have an open source software and you know you won't know how good it is and if people find it helpful, post it on Reddit. I had never used uh, Reddit before. That was the first time uh, I was there. So I went to Reddit and I did a simple post. Hey guys, I have built this tool, have a look, etc. And then I left and went to my office. It was a busy day for me. So I had meetings one after another. And uh, after a couple of hours between meetings, while I was moving from one meeting room to another, one of my senior engineers stops me at the corridor and says, hey, Costa, you are at the, at the, at the home page of Hacker News. And I say, what? What did I do? Because I didn't expect, I didn't know what Hacker News is, and it's Hacker News, so something bad happened. <laughs> so. I went to my office, I opened my laptop, and then I realized what is happening. Amazing number of stars on, the, on, the, on GitHub, articles being posted everywhere, 
in social media, but also in online magazines, emails, a ton of emails from my inbox. The demo sites of Nedata were running like crazy. Nedata got uh, 10,000 GitHub stars in just two weeks. Probably, probably, it is probably the fastest growing project on GitHub. Costa, you talked a lot about the Nedata way of troubleshooting. What's that all about? So the Nedata way of troubleshooting is simple. What we say is that the tool should have the expertise. The first is high fidelity monitoring. So we want all data all from all sources. We don't care where we, we're going to collect data. We want as many as we can, no filtering. We want them all in high resolution or the highest resolution possible. Um, then once we have all these metrics, we say, you know what? It's, it's a lot of work to visualize all these metrics. So let's build an, an engine to automatically visualize every metric. Let's add metadata to this, to this metrics to correlate them together so that this presentation is meaningful. It's not just lines of uh, numbers you don't understand, but it is structured. Eh? The whole presentation is structured. Um, well, then we said, let's, uh, let's have auto detection. Why to configure everything? have the tool, um, try to figure out what is available and how to collect it and what to do with it. Um, let's attach automatically alerts to it. So the, on one side, we have this high fidelity monitoring. On the other side, we have zero effort to set it up. Of course, you can build that custom dashboards and the likes, but these are not required. So you install the data and moments later, you have a fully functional dashboard with thousands of high resolution metrics. Then what we did is that as we progressed, we understood that we needed to change how people really troubleshoot. The process for almost all systems is through guessing. It requires skills and it also requires a lot of effort. So what if uh, you believe that it's something related to the DNS but you, have not, you do not have metrics for the, DNA, for the DNS server. What if you believe that this is something about uh, a router or your, on your network, uh, but this router is not monitored? So, or it is monitored, but you don't have dashboards. So you can't work. And we thought of it and we said, come on, wait a moment. The first thing is that we have all the metrics in high resolution and we have them already in a meaningful presentation. Now, what is missing is very simple. We want to highlight this degradation, let's say, of, uh, of uh, performance of our web server. And we want the tool to figure out what is related. What could have, have happened that could influence this or that has been influenced by this degradation? So we built two tools. One tool is, uh, we call it metric correlations. And what it does is that it tries to find uh, how two time uh, ranges correlate with each other for every metric. So you highlight a, a, an area on a chart, you press a button, the system goes through every metric possible and it gives you a, a, a ranked list, a sorted list of what is relevant. Similarly, now we're releasing another tool that is based on machine learning. So in this, with this tool, every metric is, uh, for every metric we train a model, and then for every data collection that we do every second, we predict also the value that we expect to have, that we expect to collect. If we find that there is a, di a discrepancy, we say that this point, this point in time has an anomaly, it's an outlier. And we store this in the database. So after, uh, uh, once all these data are in the database, we can query for machine learning detected anomalies. Uh, so again, we highlight an area on a chart, we press a button, the system goes through every metric you collect and gives you a list, a sorted list of uh, related anomalies. The beauty of these tools is that you don't need to guess. You, do not, you don't need to speculate or assume what is wrong. The system will present you a list of uh, 20, 30, 40 metrics. Within these 40 metrics, 
is the root cause. So this is completely different. We flipped completely the way troubleshooting works today. Any engineer that experienced this ex experiences this uh, will never go back. The net data way of troubleshooting, that's fantastic. And then everyone saying, Costa, you currently provide all of this incredible value for free. How is this sustainable? To tell you the truth, I am an open source guy. When, uh, when this started within the data, I was trying to find out what's the best approach to give as much value to the world as possible while having a business. So I concluded that uh, the best model is the model is a combination, let's say, of the model that GitHub, Slack, Cloudflare and many other companies are using. So in this model, you give most of the value for free. So every person in this world, every business, every company can use your services for free. At the same time, businesses are prepared to pay in order to customize, integrate the solution better in their use case. The success of the company comes through adoption. The more people are using the data, the more people loving the data and the data way of monitoring, the most probable the more probable is for the company to succeed financially. The fewer components there are, the least uh, um, traffic, let's say, the least path, the, the smaller the path data have to go through, uh, the higher fidelity the monitoring solution will be. So this is why I built the data, the agent, as a monitoring in a box. So it's one, one solution, you install it, it has data collection, it has uh, storage, the database engine, uh, health monitoring. Now we're adding a mail stuff to it. Even the query language, everything is in a Kobach thing that we install everywhere. I designed this in C, so it, the core of it is written in C, mainly because I wanted this to be as close to the Linux kernel as possible. I saw that from the very beginning as a, a, a component so crucial uh, for production systems as the Linux kernel. Every, it should be there on every system. So when, when we were discussing about scale now, if, if we centralize all the information, then we're going to be enforced to cherry pick metrics and lower the granularity. It cannot be done otherwise. The, the costs will skyrocket. So, and, and this is the biggest struggle. If you check even today Prometheus, the biggest struggle they have is uh, scalability. The same is true even for uh, commercial SaaS providers. They cherry pick metrics, they lo lower the, gran the granularity, mainly to control their costs. In a few commercial uh, monitoring solutions, you can also see this. So they, they give you uh, a price per point, per data collection point. Right? So if you have thousands of metrics collected every second, you have really a lot of points. So the cost of a single node can be up to $1,000 a month. So when I realized that, I said, okay, that, so the only way for NetData to avoid this and remain high fidelity monitoring is to be distributed. I knew that distributed is a lot harder. You don't have a, a database. You have really a lot of databases that you have to orchestrate together. You have to aggregate metrics eh, from all over the place. This means some kind of replication of the data. This means health monitoring. It's even more complex to do health monitoring, eh, to have alerts, synthetic alerts across all your infrastructure. Distributed is quite harder. What we gain is high fidelity monitoring and infinite scalability. So if we do this right, we don't have a problem to scale to, I don't know, uh, hundreds of thousands or millions of nodes. So we don't want, we don't want to own, we don't want to manage the metrics. We have built the NetData agent that's an amazing database by itself. It is written in C and embedded in the agent. So we use that uh, as a distributed database. The idea is that with this way, actually, the user owns all the data. 
of the metrics are not stored in a data cloud. This allows the data cloud to scale to infinity. Costa, this has been fantastic, learning about the net data way of troubleshooting. But what is your ultimate ambition for net data? So I believe that the data cloud and the, the new way of troubleshooting that it introduces will, with all these amazing tools, uh, the metric correlations, the uh, machine learning, anomaly, anomaly detection, um, I think that this will change how people perceive, how people understand the monitoring. I see the data setting a new baseline for the monitoring systems. Costa, it has just been amazing talking to you here today. Now, if you could summarize your vision of net data into one sentence. We are building a global community equipped to troubleshoot the technology that runs the world a global community of troublemakers.